Question number four, the regular topic, total internal reflection. But there is a very sweet variation in the nature in which the question is asked. And that is, in fact, the beauty of JE Advance. The same thing, the same topic, a slight different perspective of asking. Let's see what it is. It says that a planar structure of length L and width W is made of two different optical media. And N1 has been given as 1.5, okay? The refractive index of this is 1.5, another is 1.44. So clearly, it's a condition given to have a total internal reflection. And then it says capital L is very much greater than this, and even the value of capital L has been given as 9.6. Now, what is the question say? It says, if the incident angle theta is varied, look at the word, the maximum time taken by a ray to exit the plane. Now, you need to understand that we want the light ray to have total internal reflection, and we also want the time taken by the light ray should be maximum. So both these conditions have to be satisfied. For light to have TIR, the angle has to be greater than critical. So number one, the angle of incidence here inside. And number two, for maximum time, there must be maximum number of reflection. So that will happen only when the reflection is happening at the extreme situation here. So it's something like this. If I draw the figure, you know, let me just make the two extreme. One is there and other is here, okay? And after that, just try to understand. I want maximum time. That means I want maximum number of reflection. But together, I also have to satisfy the condition of TIR. So that is quite simple. It would be this, and it would go there, and after that it would go there. And the value, if you see, to have maximum number of reflection, this has to be at the critical. The value is just greater than critical. Otherwise, to have TIR, you can have other throw that would be greater than critical, but then the number of reflection would be less and you cannot satisfy the condition of maximum time. So to have TIR and to have maximum reflection, the angle here should be just greater than critical. However, for the sake of numerical calculation, I can call this as theta c. Now let's see. You know, the time of reflection is negligible, so all can be done in a single instance. What I would do is say, you just try to understand what would be the total length it has to travel. You can see the total length here is 9.6. So the length it has to travel would be 9.6 divided by sine theta c is the total length. And what is sine theta c? Well, clearly, sine theta c is not a big deal, and that's going to be n2 divided by n1. So the entire 9.6 is this. All those split, split has been added. That's very clear. That's the total length. And of course, the speed, the speed of light is this much. However, in our case, the speed that would be effective is the speed of light in this particular medium. And that's, of course, going to be C divided by the refractive index, and that is N1. So here we got the speed. Here we got the length. You just do that calculation. The time is distance divided by speed. And we need to compare in this given format, t into 10 raised to the power minus 9. So when you compute, the value of t comes out to be 50. So 50 is the correct answer for this question. Let's move to the next. All right, the fifth question of section 3. This has been brought from the topic of capacitor, and we need to calculate the capacitance. As I'd say that, you know, this is really a wonderful trait of JEE Advance, that the same question is so beautifully 
and so alternatively framed that you find freshness in the question. Let's try to see. You would find my words true in this question. A parallel plate capacitor of capacitance C has spacing D between the two plates having area A. The region between the plates is filled with N dielectric layer parallel to its plate. So that means if I make a rough diagram here, it's something like this. This is one capacitor plate to be more specifically and this is the second one. And the region between the plate is filled with N dielectric layer parallel to its plate. That means all dielectric layers have been kept parallel to its plate. Let's see. To show it, I'll just try to show schematically. This is one dielectric and there is another dielectric. All have been kept parallel and so and so it goes. And the total number of dielectrics that we have is N. And together, the number of plates has been given this and of course the separation is D so thickness of one has to be D divided by capital N which is very clear. Now the question says the dielectric constant of the mth layer at any given point is K 1 plus M by N. Capital N is the total number of layers and small m is the mth layer a differential layer. So let's even write that value. Km is equal to K1 plus small m by capital N. That has been given. Now, capital N is much, much large, even greater than 1000. That has been given. And we need to compute the capacitance. And that has to be equated with this value. And eventually, the desired value is for alpha. So the whole attention would be now to compute the value of capacitance. So it's very clear that as you go, all these differential capacitors can be treated to be capacitors in series. So what I'll do is that, first of all, I would go at any distance x. I'll consider a differential thickness that would be of dx. So let's see how much is the capacitance. That capacitance can be written as dc, and that will be k which is, of course, 1 plus m by n at that differential point into epsilon naught, area is A, divided by the width will, of course, be equals to dx, the width of this differential layer. Now, a slight bit of calculation is required because, see, small m is variable. Well, capital N is a constant. That's a total number. Small m is a differential one. And the Differential part here is dx, so by any means, by any computation, we need to relate the numerator in terms of x. And that's quite easily done. Because if you see in terms of number, this is the mth, in terms of distance, it is x. So I can easily put one given value, and that would be something like this, k into 1 plus x by d. You can convince yourself because any differential part, in terms of number, it is mth, while in terms of distance, it is x. And the final one is nth, and the distance is d. So that can be easily found out, the relationship into epsilon naught e divided by dx. Well, this is the elementary capacitance. But we have to integrate it, but remember, all those differential parts, they are in series. And if they are in series, the total capacitance, 1 by C dash, would be integral of 1 by DC with the suitable limit of X from 0 to D. Now, computing this is not a difficulty, at least for this level. And when you solve and when you equate, the value of alpha will come out to be 1. So 1 is the correct answer for this question. Time to proceed to the next one. Okay, the sixth question of section number 3. And this is also the last question of physics. Let's see, this is the question that has been derived from the topic of Doppler's effect. 
Let's see, the question has a straightforward ask, but yes, a certain numerical value is associated that may make it a bit of difficult, but overall, I rate this question on easy segment. Now, it says that a train S1 moving with a uniform velocity of 108 kilometer per hour. Okay, so this 108 kilometer per hour can be converted into 30 meter per second simply by multiplication of 5 by 18. And it approaches another train S2 standing on the platform. So this train is at rest. This is train 1, train 2, train 2 is at rest. An observer O moves with a uniform velocity of 36 km per hour towards S2 as shown. Now here it is, this observer. So that's of course the speed of 10 meter per second. And both the train are blowing whistles of same frequency 120 hertz. Okay, so this as well as this. Now when O is 600 meter away from S2, and this distance is 800 which is given, we need to compute the number of beats heard by O. So clearly, O would be registering two frequency, one produced by this train, other produced by this train, and the difference of that frequency, what we call as the beat frequency. Let's see, with the help of the geometry, let's try to go for a small construction here. This is the line of sight between S1 and the observer and quite obviously this angle if I call it right I'll be requiring this angle so this angle is straightforward right 53 degree because this is 800 this is 600 you can easily find and if this is 53 this has to be 37 degree you may even put that sine theta is 800 by 1000, that will be 4 by 5 and eventually 53 degree. Now let's see, step by step we need to calculate and yes the actual frequency is 120 hertz, that has to be done. So here I'll be taking two frequencies, frequency F1 and frequency F2. Let's see for the sake of simplicity, F1 is the frequency registered by the observer which is coming from S2. So this one would be a straight line of sight Doppler. And that is going to be 120. The speed of sound is 330. And that will be 330 plus of 10 because the detector is going towards this. And downstairs is 330. That is F1, the first frequency registered by observer. Now let's go and compute F2. F2 is the frequency which is registered by O and that is being produced from S1. That's the whole idea. So let's see, F2 is the real frequency is 120 which is straightforward. Velocity of sound is 330 and this time see, the detector's component of velocity has to be taken in this direction and that will be plus of 10 Cos 53, you can put it as 3 by 5. And here the plus comes because, you know, the detector's velocity is towards the source. That's a straightforward thing. Downstairs, you would be getting velocity of sound 330. And minus the velocity is 30, the component this side. So that's going to be 30 cos 37. A bit of calculation is required. And for the students coming to this, level of examination, that's not at all a difficult one. You get F1, you get F2, you subtract these two frequencies and that's going to give us the beat frequency. The correct value for this would be 8.13. So this is the correct option for question number six, the last question of section three. Well, with this question, we finish off the discussion of physics, paper one, JE Advanced 2019. If you are the one who have given the examination, I wish and pray for your better future. And if you are the future aspirant, hope the discussion, which we had made deliberately precise, was really helpful and 
you could get sufficient insight which was desired. Thanks for watching. Thank you very much.